Hello, everyone. This is our third webinar. Uh, so far, we have had amazing webinars previously, uh, one being the first one being self-expression, uh, sorry, self-awareness, second being self-expression. Those are available on the YouTube channel if you would like to go back and see them. We have two more coming up, inshallah, decision making and also stress management. Uh, this is an initiative between Li Walakum with WIPIC, uh, with Christiana Turketi Balducci, who has been kind enough to organize these uh, webinars with us um, to get women to understand better how to develop uh, different aspects within their emotional intelligence. And so today we will continue to do that with the subject of confidence. And today we have two amazing women with us who are gonna be talking about that. Um, we have asked a couple of questions beforehand. Uh, we would love to see what uh, you think, um, what, um, what confidence means to you, um, and then what parts of your life uh, do you want to have tips to enhance confidence within? So, um, and also if you have any questions, please write them in the chat and we'll definitely be discussing them. So starting off, we have Dr. Joanne Hans, who is a graduate from Venezuela with a professional psychology degree. She earned her master's in science um, in clinical mental health counseling, graduate with PhD in psychology from the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist and also a professional counselor. Uh, she is the president of the Middle East Psychological Association. Dr. Joanne has over 23 years of experience and has also received many awards for her work. So thank you for being with us, Dr. Joanne. Um, would you like to say a bit more about yourself? Um, sure. Should we introduce Federica and then me or, or do you want me to do it now? Just a, a, a short, a short, I, um, sure. short like few words before Federica. Just a, uh, on a personal touch, I um, have uh, different backgrounds. So I have one of my uh, area of expertise, I would say, is working with different cultures and in different settings as well. I've been in Kuwait, I'm currently in Kuwait and I've been here for 16 years now, um, but uh, worked in the US and worked in Venezuela as well. So uh, this is one of the, uh, I would say beauty of the experience that I bring that is not only in one uh, population or one culture, but in a uh, different environments, which is, I think is part of what today characterizes uh, all together, even in, in the workplace, in marriages, it's all multicultural. Amazing. We also have Dr. Federica Ferrari who is a graduate from um, La Sapienza de Roma, University in Clinical uh, Psychology, postgraduate in Gestalt Psychotherapy, and a psychologist at INMP, National Institute for Health in Rome. Thank you for joining us. Um, can we hear a bit about you? Yes, thank you so much to invite me. And, um, well, uh, about culture, yes, I'm working also um, in, in the institute where I'm working with many different cultures. So uh, I think Joanna is right. Culture is connected you know, somehow to confidence. And uh, I've been working for many years with uh, disabilities also. And uh, I had done private practice for a long time. And I'm really happy to be here and to exchange something with all of you. Thank you. That's amazing. We're happy to have you here. So I think the first question would be, um, I think there is a big misconception about what confidence is and especially for women. So I would love to know, um, Dr. John, 
what do you think confidence is and what is it not? Um, yes, that I, I actually really like the fact that you started by saying there's a misconception or a misunderstanding of what confidence is. And I would say in particular in, in the culture that we are in, in the Middle East, we see uh, the person that uh, perhaps shows um, uh, well-dressed and is having maybe a lot of expensive items or the man that has the big muscles and walks, you know, in a certain way. And we look at them as, wow, they're so confident, right? Um, but normally the tendency of people looking at the confidence is from the external factors. And to me, um, confidence is more an internal thing is the definition that the person, the individual has of themselves. To me, and, and uh, in my own private practice, I always say confidence is the key to success. It's the key to success in every aspect of a human being. Is a key for success in uh, a family, uh, work, social, uh, personal matters is when we believe that we have what we take, what, what it takes, uh, is the belief that we have that no matter what, how hard it is, a situation, how difficult, how challenging the, the situation could be, we have what it takes. Um, it might not be uh, everything, you know, 100% perfect, but it will get me through because I believe in myself and I have the ability to ask you know, ask uh, for help, ask for commendations, ask for clarifications, but uh, at least the basic tools, which is the willingness and the belief in ourselves, we have it. One of the, um, and, and, and I would love to uh, elaborate a little bit more about this, but uh, one of the aspects that I believe um, contribute to confidence, and, and a lot of people ask me, uh, do, People are born with confidence or not? Do we lose it? Do we gain it? How, how does that work? And, and in my opinion, we are all born with it. The problem is that it starts fainting as we go around in our daily you know, matters or activities and perhaps this gets affected or it gets hurt um, by, by some family dynamics, by some comments, sometimes uh, bullying that happens not only in uh, homes, but also, also in the schools, in the workplace. So as we are facing certain situations, our confidence may be affected. In order for me to understand that I can rebuild it as opposed to create it, it's, it's a key factor. We all need to know that we can rebuild it. We can emphasize that we can, you know, grow it as opposed to believing that I don't have it and I need to gain it. You know, I need to start establishing. This is a very good concept that we need to all understand. We all have it. We just have to kind of reconnect with it. And that is starting by self-esteem, which is the love that we have, the feelings that we have of ourselves. So once we feel good, then we can rebuild the confidence level. But um, I believe I've read a couple of studies that did mention that even looking good uh, when you are not feeling great, but when you get up and you change and you put on the makeup, even when you don't feel like it and you do your hair, that actually builds your self-esteem, even if it's just for the day. Is that also something that um, we should focus on or do we know we have to first look into those values um, and trust in ourselves before we look at the external part? Uh, uh, yes, in my opinion, it actually goes hand to hand. There's got to be a balance, okay, because I, I will not work on, on myself and like I have, you know, clients that come to therapy and we work on it. And the first thing I, I would probably in part of the sessions I ask when was the last time that you actually went and shopped something for you, that you got a new item? And they're like, oh no, until I lose 10 kilos, I'm not gonna buy anything, <laughs> you know? So then I said, no, you go and you buy something now. It doesn't have to be a cloth, it could be a, a perfume, uh, something for your hair, a lotion. You need to be able to feel good. 
because it goes hand in hand. It goes together. When we feel good, we feel more empowered and energetic to want to work on our other levels. And that, uh, the achievements, the accomplishments, the um, uh, reaching goals is what is actually going to increase the confidence level of the person. But how can we reach there when I don't feel good? You know? Okay. Federica, do you feel the same way about it? Yes. Uh, while you were talking, I, I like so much when uh, Joanna said about rebuild the self-confidence, no? It's um, let us hope, but it's a hope that uh, we have proof. We can uh, uh, have, maybe we have been hearted so much, so many times, but uh, we can always find a way, another situation where we can um, get up again and in the relation with someone, a therapist, but also friends, or other situation, we can rebuild our self-confidence. And also about uh, the external items. Um, I was uh, smiling because uh, just today, I had my last session with the passion and our therapy was all the time on self-confidence. And it was very nice because today for the first time after many years, she came and she had been to the hairdresser. She was always, um, very nice on um, my opinion but it was the first time she had changed the color of her hair and so when I saw her and say oh very nice and she said yes this is the sign really that <laughs> I I was in a process and um, now I feel comfortable so you're right Aiba uh, we can also start from that taking care of us is so much important uh, just also, um, putting a cream on our face can make us feeling, you no, know, um, we are taking care, uh, we are feeding our deep. Um, but it's also a result, you know, the what we are showing to the world. So um, uh, there is not something, on my opinion, that is starting, but they are so much connecting and uh, um, working together, the internal and the outside, what we can see. Um, yeah, I, I noticed uh, in some situations, Federica, that some women, for some reason, uh, think that confidence or strength and confidence is when she is um, loud or she is very rude in, in her demeanor or um, thinks about herself more than others in a situation. And that to her is what confidence is. Why have, have some women reached that conclusion? Oh, I would say for many reasons. The first that I think is that we are living in a male world. And so uh, above all, when we are uh, at work in our job, we think, uh, we always feel that we are doing some exams. We can feel, we, we can have these feelings from the outside. So maybe we think, okay, I have to show to be very strong, as smart, as usually men are. This is a, a part. Then I think there is a, something else more than uh, deep that uh, um, generally women and men, uh, we are thinking that we have to show to be strong and uh, self-confident. And so we think we have to wear a mask. Uh, no, it was what we were talking before. Uh, we have to see from outside some external signs. But if you are um, just acting, um, acting is uh, the contrary of self-confidence. And so somehow then you uh, discover yourself to the world and uh, uh, you can meet uh, a little problems and fall down for nothing. So, of course, we have to be aware of our, I was reading position, um, body position, the speaking loud can help, but we have to feel inside that, yes, maybe we are doing some mistakes, but doesn't matter. 
uh, we are trying, no? what, what Joanna was saying, uh, I try to do and uh, doesn't matter the result, I'm here. I love that point. Uh, maybe you can help me, John, with that. Um, I've been reading the research from um, Harvard researcher Amy Cuddy, and she's the one that pointed the, the power pose for women, where you, you, you pose like you're a superwoman to, for a few minutes, and that gives you um, more confidence if you're walking into a meeting or a presentation. And um, this goes in between. So do you as they say, fake it till you make it and reach that confidence level? Or do you know, is that just um, masking those fears and anxieties that you have? Um, actually, is is not necessarily about how other people see you, okay? It's about how you feel. So I really don't agree or like much what everybody is, not just you, Teva, making that comment, but fake it until you make it, is actually believing in it. If I know that I'm faking it, I will never connect with it. So I will never believe that I have it, that I have what it takes or that I, I actually look good. I'm just faking it. And that actually works, is, is contraindicated. It works against confidence because it will always constantly push us to wonder, to question. Because I'm being fake, I'm faking it, can other people around me pick on it? Will they be also seeing that I'm faking it? So I'm always going to have to work extra to, to make sure that the other people doesn't know that I'm faking it. And that's when we lose ourselves, unfortunately. Mm. Um, to me, I do believe, in, and I know this uh, study very well, the, the one that you talk about, um, and I believe that they are items that will help us. Um, for example, me in particular, when I do a presentation uh, that is with a big audience, and a big audience, I mean more than 100 people, um, I normally like to wear high heels. It doesn't have to be like high. It just, I like to have heels. It makes me feel more confident. And, and I believe my confidence level is really strong, but for some reason, it gives me that empowerment. So that's okay. We have to be able to understand ourselves and our bodies and see what is it that it makes me feel good. However, it's not necessarily that without it, I will not be able to perform, okay? Um, the, the, the example that you made of, of, the, of the loud voice, this is someone who perhaps wants to um, get the attention, almost like the control of the, of the situation before somebody actually takes it and then I'm gonna be withdrawn. So the louder that I am, the people will recognize me and perhaps they will just not point at me in a certain negative way, you know? So to me, it may, but there are people that have loud voices. I have a loud voice. So you might consider me being loud and, and I'm not just exaggerating it, it's my tone, you know? So we have to be able to understand that there's a thin line between being and feeling and not pretending. Okay, so the moment that we start pretending to be something is when we start disconnecting ourselves with ourselves. And that to me is the, the beginning of the, the breakage of that confidence is when you start losing your confidence. So in order to believe in myself, we go into the uh, phase of trial and error because without trial and error I can't build up the confidence and, and knowledge that I am able to do it Absolutely. but how do I prevent the errors that happen from defeating me and taking away from my confidence I, I can mention something maybe Federica can add to it um, it is what you said is the belief that we have um, I can tell you a story when I came to Kuwait 16 years ago so I, I move in, uh, I married a, a Kuwaiti, but I came in not being Arab, not being Muslim, not speaking Arabic, uh, not having any family or relatives or friends around it, not knowing the city, I got lost quite a bit. Um, and everyone that I would talk, they would ask me, how are you doing? Like with this kind of, worry sad feeling how are you doing how are you handling I'm like it's fine I'm getting lost but I'm getting my way around too you know 
And um, my husband always said, uh, you know, I'm going to invite the wives of my friends. I'm like, you don't need to feel pity. I got this. And now 16 years later, I think I know the culture better than him. I have more friends than him. I have more connections than him. And it's just because you have to have that internal belief in yourself. It will not be easy, but it's not impossible. And so then all you have to know is, I like when you said try and error. Yes, we try, we fall down, we dust off our, our knees and we keep on going because you believe that you have what it takes. But when we get stuck, I fell down and I won't try again. That's that's when things start going down. Yes, and I want to connect. Feel the same way? Yes, yeah. I'm going to connect because um, um, starting from the shoes, when Joanna was talking about shoes, no? Um, of course, it's good to stay comfortable. We have to find what is making us feeling comfortable. And it depends what we are doing, I would say, uh, because uh, um, at the same time, we have two needs. One is to feel safe. The other is to get surprised, to discover the world, to risk something. So uh, what Joanna was talking about, it was, uh, okay, let's try a new experience, knowing that no, uh, there can be some dangerous uh, or big, little, doesn't matter. So sometimes in our lives, we are not trying to stay in some specific situation because they are just new for us. We never tried and we think we are not able to do it, but we cannot know if we don't try. So I think sometimes it's good going out from what we call the comfort zone, trying um, new experience with the the child look, can I say like this, with the surprise to see, oh, what is going to happen? Yes, maybe I will fall down, but I can learn or I can discover, okay, that is not the situation I like, but not because I'm not able, because I don't like, so then I can choose. But I don't have to tell myself not, I am not able. I am not able to know if I don't try. So let's take some risks sometimes. Okay, so given those points, now as Taiba today, and this question goes to both of you, where do I start with building that confidence? What does it look like? Um, do I first need to acknowledge where I am now and then build on it? Or do I just keep going within what I'm already doing and then just tweak as I go? Are you asking to me, Joanna? Both, let's go ahead with you, Fatika. Okay, uh, it depends, of course. There are so many different situations of uh, um, people who are just a little, uh, not so much self-confident. Others who have so many difficulties, no, can be very hard. So um, for everyone, I would say let, what I was saying before, do it also with some fear um, and recognize your vulnerabilities, uh, accept them. Yes, everyone of us has uh, some difficulties, um, but if you are, uh, Joanna was saying, if you hide that, so you are doing a double job. Uh, only if you accept, and it, it's not about saying to everyone, you can also, if you don't mind, why not? But it's about to say to yourself, yes, I know I'm not so strong in this, but doesn't mind. And this is connected, I think, to stay in touch with the, our internal child again. Uh, the child that uh, was uh, at the beginning so happy to stay at the world and then started to receive uh, some hit some uh, bad experiences. Mm, so that child is still here, but together there is an adult who had also, I'm sure, some good experiences. So we have to take from that the, the strength and to look at the child and uh, reassure him, uh, hugging him and say, okay, we can do together. But of course it depends, it's a, a very, 
uh, long process. And uh, we have just to collect some little experience, also taking some risks. Uh, some, we can do some mistakes and say, okay, it doesn't matter. Next time I will do better. That's my opinion. Interesting. Joanne, what yeah, can I do? I, I, I agree 100%. And, and I would probably add, um, statistically, it has been uh, proven that more confident people have one common component, which is positivity or optimistic. So we see that more successful people uh, will fail, but they believe that they can try again and it, they will succeed. Okay, so I think uh, a factor of um, optimism and, and, and positivity is key. I think that um, we, we may have gone through uh, patches or rough moments in, in our lives, but I think the, the first aspect that we have to look into is the importance of self-care. Uh, that is, that's an, an absolute priority because the moment that we take care of ourselves is the moment that we start valuing and respecting ourselves. Once we respect ourselves, the self-esteem grows because we feel better. And when the self-esteem is stronger, the confidence gets stronger. Okay, so we probably need to stop, start from that very fundamental uh, level of self-respect. So and, I don't want to cut you off, but yeah. can you talk a bit about what self-care looks like? Yes, yes absolutely. Interrupt me. I like to be <laughs> interactive. Um, self-care can, can vary, okay? It has many different aspects. It's like a rainbow. It has many different layers and every different colors. Uh, but the fundamental thing is to know that we are important, okay? So me as actually uh, before this the, the, this webinar uh, the the session that i had before this um she's pregnant and she's actually thinking she's worried because she doesn't know if she's going to be able to cope with the demands of having a baby and um she said i am the type of mom uh, the type of woman that i don't want nannies i don't want helpers i don't want my mother my in-laws i want to do it i want to like even in my marriage i'm the one that cook Oh, we only have a part-time person that comes and help us clean. I said, all of this is beautiful, perfect. But you have to be able to understand that are you giving some time for you, for yourself as well? Because then otherwise it's going to get into a burnout stage, you know? And so we have to be able to understand that as those aspects are important, I am as important. So self-care starts from number one, admitting the importance of the individual. Number two, uh, doing more of what makes me happy. Um, a lot of times we do what we're good at and we do what we have to do, but we never stop and ask, does it make me happy? So I say, for example, what makes me happy? It makes me happy to dance. When was the last time that you danced? Oh, it was like about two years ago. So, you know, so, oh, I love cooking. When was the last time you cook? Oh, I don't know. I'm so busy. I don't have time. I, 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 I actually just buy and deliver and provide what, you know? So if we don't start from the things that makes me happy, that's not a self-care. Okay. So also understanding that there's got to be a balance in the, in our days, in our week, in our month, it has to be a balance. Um, we have to be able to recharge. I always say in the typical social media graphic uh, picture of the battery of the phone, right? It goes down and we recharge it. The same thing happened to us. And it's true, it's a cliche, but we have to recharge our batteries. Do you know what and how do you can recharge your batteries? That's knowing ourselves. So uh, one of the things that I always practice with my clients is celebration how to celebrate and what to celebrate. A lot of times they don't even know how to celebrate. And celebrate can start from just a word, a kind word. Good job, I did it. Good job, that was amazing. Um, inviting someone because I had a very busy week and I'm gonna invite somebody to play some cards with me this weekend, you know? So we need to know how to celebrate and what to celebrate. So that those are basics for self-care. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. 
Um, I think today with this era of, as you said, social media, um, it's very hard to take to stop and say good job because you're always comparing yourself to what someone else is doing and they're doing so much more than what I am doing. So uh, Federico, how do you feel I should deal with that? Should I just get off social media or no. what no, do I do? <laughs> I would correct what you say. Uh, the others are showing always they are doing better, but um, actually we don't know. And this in the social and, and also in true life. And um, I want to say something about uh, social media uh, in this specific time as um, we had uh, the experience to stay at home for a long time, uh, uh, everyone in a different way, but um, above all the teenagers, uh, I've, so, uh, I've met uh, many teenagers who had the uh, school uh, at home, but online. And they were saying to me, uh, I cannot stand it anymore. And I'm so much afraid to speak online and I can understand them. I have this problem. I don't like to uh, so much, but we, this is what we can do, not only because we are in Kuwait, but we are doing this in Italy from more than one year. And, and because they are afraid to be judged so much uh, through the online wing. Um, and that is the point uh, about confidence. Self-confidence is connected to how much confident you are with the external world. Uh, how much you, you feel that the other can uh, betray you, can give you problem, will not love you. No, about self-care uh, that Joanna was talking about um, is also connected to the idea I don't like to anyone. The others are always judging me. And of course, social media, as you were saying, Taiba, can uh, um, increase this problem, but uh, I will not delay them. Of course, we have to learn and to teach uh, how to use, uh, but it's not only uh, the social media the problem. The problem is the idea that everyone is looking at you, judging, because you build this idea of yourself, maybe with your family experience when you were, or other kind of bad experience in your life when you were a child. So we have to stop this kind of thinking. And I think also to shift the attention from ourselves to the others. Maybe also the others are having this kind of thinking. Maybe also the others uh, are afraid. So let's try to build a bridge um, on these points, because uh, there we can find that, okay, we are not alone and uh, we can start again to be confident in the, in the others. Do you feel yeah. that um, it could actually be used for your benefit? Because when you're on social media, for example, like you're on Instagram and you're posting and then you can go back and see where you were and where you are today, which obviously there has been been some progress we're just not aware of it is this a good way to journal my journey look uh, again the session i had with that patient i was talking before uh, i was asking on your opinion what made the the, the change in these last uh, days and she said you know what my mother gave me um, to see my old pictures when i was a child and I was looking at them with completely another look. So I think this can happen in long times. I'm not so sure in a um, few years, but, but of course we, we can learn something. We can discover something from our pictures. Um, I yeah. sometimes use them to work and um, it's very nice. Can help. Amazing. I, I, nice. think, I think, Teba, I think it's dependent on how you use your, what is the, the, the usage of your social media, you know? Uh, you use it to impress others. You use it as a journaling experience for you. You know, my, my personal account 
It's all pictures of trips and things. So when I'm in a waiting room, in a doctor's appointment, I go back and I'm like, oh my God, this place. And, you know, so, but it's very private. It's, it's uh, more for me than for others, you know? So I think it depends on what is the purpose of your, of your social media usage. Yeah. I think it's more than uh, my usage as much as my comparison, which, which, which gives my confidence a hit. When, for example, I use examples about myself. When I look at other mothers, how they bounce back after having kids, or their, their bodies bounce back, and then they're back at work. And I'm like, why did it take me months to, one, look better and then fit into my jeans? And then to be able to juggle that um, separation anxiety from my son and then just being able to focus at work, do, is there something wrong with me? I think that's the bigger part that, that um, I want to know how to deal with. Um, if I'm a new mother, um, I'm, I was lucky that social media didn't exist when I first had my kids. I don't think I would have uh, done well with it. But I see a lot of um, women today, younger women who are struggling because they need to look good and that doesn't uh, add to their confidence when they see everyone else bouncing back and one person commented about filters and just not knowing where the filter starts and where reality ends basically so um, what are ways we can um, acknowledge that this is not real and then be able to to find those smaller wins that we can call wins when everyone else is saying, no, a win is not running for 10 minutes, it's running for a marathon. That's a win, that's what you should be celebrating. And things like you have to grind and you have to have grit to be successful. Uh, all of these damper uh, person's confidence that I don't have it in me. Uh, especially if you look at things like personality traits of an introvert versus an extrovert. Confidence is very different for each one. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thanks. Joanna, you... No, I don't know. <laughs> yes, Go ahead, I agree. I, no, no, yes, I agree also. Because we have to respect our self, our inner, and um, so there's nothing, there's, there's no problem if uh, one person is more introvert. Um, but if he's suffering, she, he is suffering for this, uh, and he wants to be more open, so he needs to reassure himself, herself and say, okay, I can try, why not? And maybe one day, one evening, I can um, try to do a little different, try to, but not hiding, but doing new experiences. Uh, that is the, the point of my view. I, I, I think, yeah. Tira, that um, the key is to get to know ourselves better. And to know what are my capacities, what are my limits? You know, I, I have a lot of people that are uh, well known on push, on social media, and and they are also battling their own struggles. You know, they're they're having their own battles, and so we have to be able to understand that yes, that person may look amazing in those jeans a month after delivery. Um, one thing could be the genes, actually the genetics. Okay. Another thing could be the, the actual stress that that person put herself into or, or him or, you know, uh, what, what did they do in order to go to, to get to that place? I had, um, I had a client with a severe eating disorder and she said, one of the key factors that increased my eating disorder was the fact that people kept saying, whoa, how did you do it? You look amazing. You lost so much weight. Oh my God, every time I see you, you're skinnier. And so then she got reassurance and that approval. And so it made her be even a lot more um, harsh on her body in order to maintain that weight or, or that look, you know? So we never know. I always say, just don't compare. We're, we're very different. Everybody's different. Everybody may need less time, more time, different things, just be able to understand and to read yourself. 
Yeah. No, I just have one uh, question I would like to ask. First of all, thank you very much because I'm really learning, learning a lot. And of course, I mean, I, I, I really like the, the, the connection with the self-care because all starts there. But my, my, while you we were thinking, we talk about, you know, low level of confidence. What about when there is uh, um, overconfidence? If there is, and how is the line and the balance with arrogance? Because sometimes, you know, it happens to me that I, I, when I meet people, I say, okay, they're very confident, but I don't really like them neither. I think they can be, you know, dangerous for the same for this for themselves at the same time. So I want to know what you think about the overconfidence and the arrogance, how to balance. So this is for both of you. This question. But. Overconfidence, uh, I'm trying to think, but I cannot imagine. I understand what you mean. And I think to what you say, arrogance and... Um, uh, yes, I was saying something before about this, no? about the ones who is the other side, uh, the ones who are showing they are so self-confident, but you can feel uh, it's very easy to, to feel and to see that there is a kind of mask. There is something that is, uh, is it doesn't not work. working, no? And uh, that is the other strategy that someone has found. And at the same time, I, this is helpful for the ones who are uh, low confident to recognize they are so similar somehow. Yes, I would say this because uh, um, they, both of them are thinking that the others are all looking at them and thinking something. They feel somehow in the middle for a bad reason or for a very good reason. But the process is similar somehow. So that was what I was saying before. Try to, um, to move your attention from yourself. You are not in the middle. You are like the others. And as Joanna was saying, at the same time, you are completely different. So uh, the other's attention is not always on yourself uh, in the bad and in the good way. So yes, I think somehow they are similar. So ca can we say, for example, I don't know, that the arrogance is the result of low confidence? On okay. my opinion, yes. Okay, so I, your I, opinion. Yeah, I will give, I will give um, my opinion as well. I think so. And I actually think, in, and again, this is just Joanne speaking. <laughs> okay, you can just quote me on it. Um, there's no such thing as overconfident. As you are confident or not. I think that those that are perceived as overconfident is what Federica said. They're just masking something. They have to prove something. Mm -hmm. And a person that is confident doesn't have to prove. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think that's the thin line. Um, and so then overconfident and arrogance may go hand in hand. They may go together because um, when we are arrogant, when the person is over, um, uh, I don't know, yeah, arrogant, let's say, um, it's because of the need to overpower. When the person wants to be arrogant is because I want to be the big dog, okay? And if I have the need to be that overpowering the others, it's because of there's a fear factor here. So I have the need to overpower because what would happen if they overpower me? What happened if they corner me? You know. So I, I believe that that's what makes the person being more arrogant. Um, arrogant can be rude, can be aggressive, can be disrespectful. Sorry, Joanna, is uh, I attack because I'm so much afraid to be attacked. To be attacked. So, so I am afraid. I'm not so much uh, brave heart. Strong uh, as I want to show. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, this is the classic bullying. You know, we have bullying at all ages and in, in all different settings. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and what happened with bullying, uh, bullies? Uh, people see them and, and, and the, the no, not so... Um, uh, overpowered people may see them as oh my God, I'm afraid of that person, right? And why we see them like that? Because they are trying to mask, let me attack before they actually attack me. And I say, everyone who bullies is hurt inside. It's, there's a lot of things that have not been solved yet. 
Okay, yeah, so yeah. that goes, there's there's a comment from Farah who says, I think also sometimes our voices are not heard. That's why we need to be loud. Mm. So it could go the other way. If you feel like you're not valid or valued, you need to be louder, no? True, but I, I would be very careful with saying yes, absolutely. Um, and, and this is a very good uh, comment because nowadays we see the wave that we're seeing um, in the world of feminism, for example. And we have to be extra loud and we have to go to the streets with big signs saying equal rights and all of that, right? Um, I, I, I have been working in many different settings, uh, universities, clinics, hospitals, um, um, substance abuse institutions in many different settings. And in most of them, men was the um, dominant gender, okay? I never had to fight and be loud in order to be heard. I just had to be confident. I had to be able that what I'm saying, I'm saying it with substance, that I am make sure that I'm saying it with fundamental uh, knowledge. If I am not connected with what I'm saying, it I, it I don't believe in what I'm saying, that's when they, they will come and overpower me. But when I have proof, when I have, you know, that, that sense of it, it should be done this way because X, Y, and Z, because uh, research, because of past experiences, because of history, because of whatever, people will turn around and say, what do you have to say? And, and we speak firmly. We don't hesitate. And that's what I always say. And I know um, before we, we started this, this talk, uh, you, you mentioned that we wanted to focus on women and we wanted to focus on the workplace. Um, I, I have to say that us women, <laughs> sorry for the men that are here today, we, we have a lot more skills and we have the ability to multitask and to uh, diversify ourselves a lot more than men. And it's interesting because statistics have uh, shown that young women, like uh, four in five women, uh, suffer from low, low self-esteem and confidence at the younger age. But as they grow, it's as equal. So, so there's a factor of what there? Of experience, of, of, of knowing and proving ourselves. So when we believe that we have accomplished and we have gained, no one can stop us. So I don't have to be loud. And I always say, I can, I can break a man's leg with a very nice smile in my face. You know, I don't need to be loud to be heard. In certain, in certain <clears throat> scenarios, of course, I, I have to uh, be careful with okay. that. So I, I came to a conclusion with years of reading about these topics, especially pertaining to women, and tell me if I am correct or I'm wrong. Lack of self-confidence is wanting to control everyone and everything around you, but being confident is understanding yourself and being able to control yourself, being resilient and moving on. Is that correct? Absolutely. I would not use the word um, control, control, but uh, no, uh, taking care, accepting, and um, take the hands and, and go on walking. I, I prefer this because controlling uh, makes me think to someone still judging and no, yeah, um, taking the power. Yes. So we don't. Okay, we have an interesting question. Is being humble one of the steps towards being confident Federica sorry it's been he humble is humble one of the many steps towards building confidence I have to say to be uh, really honest I don't know the meaning of humble can you okay. explain like, uh, being, sorry uh, down to earth um, down to earth not not bragging okay so being humble yeah. in, in my opinion being humble it is not really correlated. It doesn't have much. I can be very humble and that doesn't mean that I'm confident, that I'm lack of confidence. Humble can be, it's, it's, a, it's a characteristic of a personality. It's a trait that you have. Um, but, but the opposite of it, which is bragging about it, is what I think that may, may be connected with the lack of confidence. Um, mm. uh, we, we have to, and, and I would please emphasize that as human beings, 
we have to be able to recognize our own uh, achievements as well. Okay, so being humble is great, is beautiful, amazing, but we also need to learn how to celebrate our achievements. If I keep quiet, if I don't talk about it, no one will know about me. Um, if I don't promote what I'm doing, people will not have to get to know me now. People all over the world know me now, even in Italy, you know, so. Um, and we cannot be humble because you're not going to leave the cocoon. You're not going to leave your bubble if you are just always humble. Now, I will not be, uh, I will be humble when it comes to um, so much of the things. I don't have to tell everybody all the things that I have done and that I have accomplished. You know what I mean? So there's got to be a balance there. And now, sorry, I, I understood the meaning. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, yes, I want to add that uh, also before talking about uh, speaking loud. Um, I can speak with someone who is speaking loud. And if I don't like, I start speaking very um, quiet, very down. And magically, he's uh, connecting with me. So, but this is not to be humble. This is using the mind, using what Joanna was saying, our abilities and other strate strategy. And um, yes, we, we need to be, to know who we are, to say, as I did before, sorry, this I don't know, or this I'm not able to do, but it's not humble, it's um, what it is. And uh, I don't feel less um, strong, less able to do things because uh, I don't know something uh, or I never did. Uh, it's different. Interesting. Uh, Federica, there's a question from Paula. Is there a connection to low confidence and addiction, for example, with food or bad relationships and love addictions? Mm. There can be. Um, I just say shortly, uh, we said something with Joanna, of course, uh, this is connected to how we felt uh, in our primary relation uh, with the caregiver, usually the mother, but not only the family in general. And uh, mm, generally, I can say that people who are self-confident are the one who are not so sure to find, again, if they go far, to find again the one uh, is loving them. So that's why they can uh, have the anxiety to stay always so much close and developing some, what uh, we are saying, uh, addiction to, in the relation. Mm -hmm. Because that is a kind of control we are trying to, to have on the other. So there can be a connection, my opinion, yes. John, is that addiction or codependency? Or are they the same? No, they're not the same. Um, in, in addiction, going back to the, to the question, the previous question, we have to look into uh, most of the times um, addictions and um, that dependency on people or food or other things um, is basically uh, the person looking in the search of um, looking for that belonging, looking for that safe place, that safe comfort place or comfort zone. Um, most people with, we've seen in, in, in experiences that uh, most people, for example, with anxiety disorders have the tendency to create addictions, um, addiction to meds, addiction to people, addiction to shopping, addiction because they're numbing an, an emotion. So I, I would say, uh, unfortunately, I believe there is a connection on that self, low self-esteem and addictions because we, we actually are looking for an outside, uh, perhaps substance or item or person to fulfill something that is missing inside. And, and that's when we need to start, you know, looking into the inside, who I am, what I'm capable, what I have, what are my strengths, what are my, you know, traits, my characteristics, my, my, my personality, what is good about me, what I like about myself that I don't need someone to come and validate, you know? Um, I, I, I work a lot with addictions. Actually this morning I had a webinar, almost two hour webinar about addictions. And I always say uh, the people have the tendency to lose themselves uh, trying to fit in and trying to find that soothing, 
with an item or a person or a substance uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the searching is when we actually end up you know, with an addiction or a dependency. If I answer the question. Amazing. Yes, thank you. And we are unfortunately running out of time, but this was amazing. Um, we loved having you here. Thank you so much, Dr. Joan Hans and Dr. Federica Ferrari. Uh, we, if you guys are interested in following more of their work on our Instagram page, we have uh, tagged them uh, so you can follow them uh, each separately. Thank you so much for being here. I really Thank enjoyed you. this. Thank you. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.